Hello there. Pardon the mess in the shop here. I'm actually switching from winter mode into summer mode. But before I do that, this little guy needs some attention. So what we have here is a Case 311B. And as you can see, it's missing the carburetor. So what we're going to do today is show you how to clean and rebuild the carburetor for a Case 311B. So I didn't show you the disassembly video, but what I've been doing for the last hour or two is soaking that carburetor in this ultrasonic cleaner I got from Harbor Freight. I use Simple Green in there as the, uh, as the material to help clean, and it does a pretty good job. Uh, now let's get you over to the bench and show you what we're working with. So what we have is an old Marvel here, and the model is... a TSX 635. So for those of you that don't know, all these carburetors should have a brass tag on it like this, and if you go ahead and clean off all the gook that has built up over the years, you should see the model number on there. So in this case, we have the TSX 635. So what, is it, what I did was I took that TSX number and I threw it in the old Google machine and searched for a carb rebuild kit, and what I came up with was this kit from a company called Steiner Tractor. Now, I've used Steiner in the past. Some people don't like them because they say they make cheap parts. They've worked well for me so far. I haven't really had any issues. One of the things I really do like about a Steiner kit, and I, I suppose other kits come with this too, but you get this nice set of instructions with parts breakdown, exploded view, um, disassembly instructions, flip her over. you got some cleaning instructions, any sort of special instructions like setting the float, setting your uh, jets, and all that sort of thing. So that's something I really like about that company. Now, going down here, one of the first things I like to do is pull all the parts out and try to match them up with my old parts once I've disassembled everything. So, you know, take my gaskets, lay them next to each other, line them up, make sure all the holes line up properly. That looks pretty good. You know, take your, uh, take your jets, your needles, make sure they all look about the same, same length, that sort of thing. Make sure the threads are the same. And do the same thing with all the other parts and pieces there, just to make sure everything appears to be apples to apples. Now, I haven't really had any issues with this. Every once in a while, a part won't be quite right, and uh, they've been pretty good about sending me a replacement one, so that's where we've been. So now let's uh, take you to what we've done with the carburetor so far. All right, so the first thing I normally do once I get it out of the ultrasonic cleaner is take the, take the carburetor and give it a good, healthy dose of carb cleaner just all over the place and all the... All the passageways, inside, outside, just to get all that gook out of there left over from the ultrasonic cleaner. So now, the next thing I do, I go ahead and every little passageway we see like this, we go ahead and we take um, a piece of wire or a small drill bit and you go in there by hand just to try to poke out any bit of gunk that's still in there, okay? Um, even here, like in the throttle shaft, there are... I don't know if you can see that in the picture there, but there's two small holes down in there, and these actually were plugged up on this carburetor, so I went in there with my wire, poked them in there, and got them all cleaned out. Now then the next thing I like to do is to take my compressed air and blow out all the passageways even further, get any sort of loose crud out of there. So just take it, a little blast here, a little blast there, give a little blast same thing over here, any of the passageways, come out. And make sure that you feel good air flowing through each and every one of those passageways to make sure that nothing's all blocked up. So now what I like to do is check to see what kind of shape my choke and throttle shaft are in. So try to see if there's any side to side movement. Choke shaft has barely any. Um, see if there's any up and down movement and it has none. So I'm going to say my choke shaft is good. Um, you also notice that there is a blade in there, and there's a spring on this little flap in the blade there. Um, as I push on that, it feels the same as the replacement that came with the kit, so I'm going to go ahead and say my choke shaft is good. Now, let's talk about the throttle shaft. Throttle shaft uh, does look like there's a little bit of wear on there. It, doesn't, it slides side to side. doesn't look like it fits tight necessarily um, around the edges there, and there's up and down movement. So this kit did come with a new throttle shaft, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it, and as you can see, this one has been, uh, we'll say, repaired uh, by someone in the past. So we're going to go ahead and give this a freshen up. All right, we went ahead and grabbed our flathead screwdriver. We're going to go ahead and take this throttle shaft out. Uh, first thing we need to do is loosen up the screws, but before that, I should mention, 
see there's a little 20 on there there's also a 20 on the new blade that came in so that remember that orientation because that's going to be important so you, so you make sure you get the new one in the same way the old one was in that way everything lines up the way it should so now we're going to go ahead and take our screwdriver and loosen these bad boys up drop the old screwdriver there okay one down one thing that ultrasonic cleaner seems to help to do too is get some of these bolts a little bit loosened up. It seems to penetrate in there a little bit so that taking these screws out are a little bit easier. Alright, we got those loose. We're going to go ahead and flip that over. Catch your parts. There we go. And we can go ahead and slide our throttle shaft out. Before I go any further, another thing I like to do is to take my throttle stop screw and set it the same as what the old one is. So I kind of get them all lined up, just how we have them here. And I will turn my new one out until it is just about the same as the old one. And that'll get you close for starting a tractor. Uh, once you get it on the tractor, you can always adjust it to your liking. But I always like to get it as close as I can before I actually get it in there. One thing I almost forgot to mention, there is a little brass retainer in here. You can just take the old one out by prying on it with a screwdriver like that. Set the old one in there. Uh, take your throttle shaft. Make sure to put your little felt uh, bushing on there. And push that in there. And then lightly tap with a hammer like so until it's seated like that. Now you can see there is zero play up and down with that throttle shaft. So that's gonna be a nice, nice tight fit there. Won't be sucking air anymore. All right, we got our throttle shaft and blade reinstalled here. Um, as you can see, very, very, very little side to side movement, no up and down movement. So we're in a lot better shape than we were a few minutes ago. All right, now it's time to start assembling all the parts and pieces back together. So first up is gonna be our power jet and main nozzle. Power jet drops down that little hole there. Hopefully you can get it in the right orientation the first shot like I just did. There we go. Just take your flat blade screwdriver. Go ahead and get her all screwed in. Looks like we're almost there. There we go. Snug that up. Now take your main jet, make sure you got your gasket on there, as provided by the kit. Just drop him down the hole there and start screwing him in. I'll go finger with my fingers up until I can't uh, grab onto it anymore. Then we'll grab our deep socket. Snug that up. Don't go too tight. It's just brass. Snug will do. Okay. Now we'll take a good look. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. Alright, so now we'll work on the top half of the carburetor. So first up is going to be our idle jet. Little guy here. Idle jet's going to drop right in there. Take your flat blade. Again, screw that in there. Snug it up. Okay. Now, we're going to take our gasket. Now, I've made this mistake before, too. You're, you're going to have to put your gasket on before you put your float assembly together. It ain't going to work. So, I've taken my uh, Venturi and slipped it through here. So, the big end of the Venturi goes to the top side of the carburetor. Okay. Set that in there. Get it in place. Now, we can put our float assembly together. So, we're going to grab our float. We're going to grab our pivot. Actually, first, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take our, put our needle and seat together. So, we're going to take our seat assembly here. Make sure the gasket's on there, as provided by the kit. Take a big flat blade screwdriver and work that down into place. Go 
Come on. All right, get that good and snug in there. There we go. All right, so now we're going to take our needle and seat assembly and get it in there. So don't forget this little spring. So first thing we're going to do is take our needle and drop it down in the seat there. Now here's the way I do this. There's not really an easy way to do this, but this is what's worked best for me. So I take my, my retainer there, set it on my float, go down here and angle slightly forward and push back. And now we've grabbed our needle. Okay, now we're hooked on there. Now we can take our pivot, work that in there. Okay, that's good. Now, keep that as centered as possible, and you should be ready to assemble the top half of the carburetor there. All right, now let's join our top half and our bottom half. So let's take our bottom half, flip her over. Be careful not to crush the float as you're putting it in there. Just kind of work that down so everything sets properly once you're flush. Hold the two together, flip it over. Now we can put our screws in. So the kit came with brand new screws and lock washers for each screw. So let's go ahead and get our holes lined up. Be careful that the gasket's not in the way. I like to start the first one with my flat blade here. Get it going just to help hold everything in place. Now I'll go to the opposite corner and do the same thing. There we go. Get that one started. Okay, now let's do the remaining two. All right, once you get them all in there, you can snug them all down. I like to go opposite corners here to make sure everything's setting down properly. Yep, snug it up nicely. Yep, and one more. Okay, now is also a good time to give the uh, needle and seat a pre preliminary test to make sure that things are closing up as they should. So you can take here and blow into here. Now I should be able to blow right through since the float should be in the down position. So I'll go ahead and give her a give her a blow. Yep, everything's working. Everything's blowing through. Now if I flip it upside down, the float should be sealing with the needle. So now if I blow in, I shouldn't be able to blow. Nothing. Flip her back over. There we go. That's all working properly. All right, almost done here. Let's get the rest of our stuff together. So, so first, let's put our uh, bolt plug in. Take our ratchet and snug that up. There we go. Good and snug. Hopefully that doesn't leak. <laughs> Now we will take our needles and get those in place. So first off, we'll take our idle needle. Screw that in. So we're going to take our flat blade again. We're going to screw that in until lightly seated. So don't crank it down. Just go in slow until you feel it's going to seat and let it be lightly seated. All right, we're lightly seated, right? Right, lightly seated right there. Now our instructions tell us to go down to lightly seated and then back out one full turn, okay? So lightly seated, there's a half a turn, there's one full turn, and that should get us started there, okay? All right, next up is our power jet, or power needle. So there is a steel washer that needs to go on there between the spring and the carburetor body and then there needs to be a gasket that goes in there too that'll seat down inside the hole in there all right so same thing we're going to put these in here 
and we're going to turn these in by hand until lightly seated. All right, we're lightly seated, so we'll just double check that. Back off, turn down. Yep, you can feel it seat. Back off, turn down. Okay, so again, for the instructions, this also says one turn out. So we're pretty much straight across there. Half. One. Okay. She's all put back together. Now it's time to go put it back on the tractor. All right, before we get into this, i got to show you guys this tool. This is one of my favorite things I've ever gotten at Har Harbor Freight. It's a flashlight. Um, you can see it's got a pivoting head. It is magnetic, so you can stick it wherever you want to. It's got three light modes. It's got a bright, a dull, and then a mode where that uh, lights up up there. Um, it is USB, micro USB rechargeable, which is awesome. Uh, so just a very, very useful tool. So I love it for doing projects like this where I need to get a little bit more light on the subject so I can you know, mount it anywhere like that. And now I can see what the heck I'm doing and not have to hold a flashlight. All right, let's get the carburetor back on. So first thing I'm going to do here is clean up our intake mating surface here. So hit it up with some carb cleaner and take a little wire brush and... Just make sure there's nothing remaining from the old gasket on there. I like to get around the edges here. Yeah, you can see there's some gunk filled up on there. Get that all cleaned up. Put it on the back side here. And get our surfaces up here. Yeah, hit it that cleaner one more time to get off the remnants. All right, now we should be good to start. So, first thing we have to do here is reattach our uh, throttle shaft to the governor there. So, I'm gonna do this. Left everything right the way I had it, but uh, here we go, we got a nut, we got a lock washer, we got a flat washer, another flat washer. So the throttle shaft goes sandwiched between the two big flat washers. So here we go. Get him in there. Now we will take our one flat washer. Get it on there if we can. Let the wrestle this a little bit to tight quarters in here. Come on. There we go. Now we're going to take our lock washer. Get him on there. We can. Okay. Almost. Small fingers help in a situation like this. If you have a son, a small child, might need to solicit their uh, their hands here. And now we got to get our nut on there. Okay, this is going to be the tricky part. Nope, don't drop the nut. Got it. Not quite. I'll pick you back up when I get that on there. All right, we got that nut started on there now. So now we can uh, go finger tight until we get it to where we can't get it anymore. Now we're going to take our 3 8 and our 7 16 and we're going to tighten that guy up. Tilt the carburetor a little bit. There we go. Now we can get in there. Snug that up. Okay, good. All right. Now that will continue to pivot, so don't worry. You can get that nice and tight. All right, now we can go ahead and slide the intake side of the carb 
into the boot. This is an old crusty boot, so this may take some wrestling a little bit here. Almost got her. Okay. Now don't forget your gasket. Set our gasket on top there. We'll get our bolts. Get those started up here. Another useful tool, by the way, are these magnetic parts holders. I'm beginning to love these working on these older machines because everything's metal, everything's steel, so I'll stick right to it. All right, let's go ahead and finger tighten those. Not enough room for a socket in there, so you got to use an open end wrench. So this is a half inch up here. So we'll take our half inch, tighten her up. Make sure those are good and snug. So we've got a good seal up there. Same thing on this side. but that's okay. I know you guys are going to laugh at my wrenching skills here a little bit, but too bad. Okay, almost done. All right, one more little... Okay, she's snug. Check this side again. She's snug. All right. Good. All right. Now it's time to put the rest of the pieces back together here. So before anybody says anything, yes, I can see that the uh, intake boot over here is pretty chewed up. It's actually missing a chunk off the end, so I will be replacing that at a later date. But for now, I got it in there as good as I can. I'm just going to snug up our hose clamp here just to get us by for the interim. So, yes, I, I will be replacing that. All right, we got that good and snugged up here. Um, we'll take our fuel line. Yep, I realize that's kind of a janky setup here too. It was done by the previous owner who was my father-in-law. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. Get these, get that line fit on there as best we can. And get a couple of hose clamps up here so we don't have a fuel leak. So we'll put one right about there. Snug that up. Okay. And we'll put another one right about there. All right, our last step here is going to be to get our choke cable back into place here. So you can kind of see there's a, a kink here where it was uh, pinched in there last time. So we're going to go ahead and put the end of the cable through our hole there. All right, go ahead and tighten down our retainer, retaining screw there to pinch it off. Pinch that end off. Okay. Now we can go ahead and put our sheath in the retainer back here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and test it by hand. Yep, feels like we got full choke there, we bottomed out. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and work up here at the control station. Alright, that all looks good. Now, the only thing left to do is to see if she'll fire up. Okay, time to fire it up. Um, off camera, we turned on the gas already. Um, I'm checking the gear shift right now to make sure it's in neutral. Shake hands. We'll go full choke, full throttle. See what happens. Here we go.
sounds pretty good to me. There you go. Thanks for watching.